in this tutorial, we're going to be converting this design here into a custom WordPress theme. Now this design is a fully responsive design and it is based off of Bootstrap. And uh, I'll just kind of show you how the design here looks. So you can see that it is responsive, meaning when I break down to a mobile point, we get the mobile media query. Uh, we have the sidebar on the left, the navigation. We also have a few pages that are particularly important to blog style websites. For example, we have a home page that has a little featured slider here and a few things like that. We have a post page. This would be what an individual blog post would look like. Notice how on the bottom here, there is also a comment section with nested comments and replies as well. And then we have what is known as a blog page. So this would just be like a static page, like an about or a contact page or something like that. We have our blog archive page, which would list all of our blog posts in some sort of archive fashion with our next links as well. And then we have a contact us page just to kind of simulate a simple web form that you can also enter. So again, all the pages on here are fully responsive in this uh, layout. And we're going to be converting this entire template into a custom WordPress theme. Now, WordPress themes are really nothing more than a hierarchy of template parts. And what I mean by that is in this theme right here, I'm just gonna divide this into a couple little sections here. So this area here at the top, right? This area, we would typically call like the page heading or the title. And this area over here, this entire sidebar area, we could call that a sidebar, we call it a heading. This area right in here is called a navigation. This area over here, we would call our content area. And then if we get clear down to the bottom here of our page, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit right here. This section right here, right? We could call the comments section. And then at the very, very end down below, we would call our footer area right here, uh, our footer, right? So this gray bar at the bottom. So in other words, all websites have kind of some sections to them. And really all a WordPress uh, template or custom theme does is it takes all those various sections and splits them apart into individual files. So it's so, sort of like creating components from your template. So instead of having just one big long HTML file, I have many, many separate pieces, one with the header, one with the content, one with the footer, one with the sidebar, one with the menu. And then WordPress sort of puts all those back together into a single uh, long file as needed. So when we're creating our WordPress theme here to start, we're going to be doing a fairly basic theme, but it will have all the features of a custom WordPress theme. And we're gonna start out with the required files that you need in order to set up a WordPress theme. So again, this tutorial assumes there's some prerequisites here, of course, we're not gonna be designing this from scratch. I've done that in a previous video, this particular layout. And this assumes that you've already got WordPress set up and installed on your local server or on a live web server somewhere, as you will need to have WordPress installed and running in order to create the custom theme. So assuming those two things are already complete, let's go ahead and, and uh, complete this process. Now I will make this particular theme available in the description so that if you want to follow on exactly with my same template, you can. But the process here really applies to any sort of template that you're going to be creating. So let's get started with the first required template files. Okay, now I want to first show you the structure of a WordPress theme and where those files need to be uploaded. Now here in this sidebar here, I've got my main uh, WordPress directory. So this has all the WordPress files that are installed when you unpack and download the zip file. There's a folder in there called WP content. And inside of the WP content, there is a folder called themes. And this is the folder in this area where you will put your specific theme. So what you would do here is you would create a folder. So I'm just gonna create a new folder here and I'm just gonna call my theme follow Andrew. And once we have our folder in place, I've got this little directory here that's called my theme template. So I'm gonna drop that in this as well as we're gonna be referencing those HTML and CSS files quite often. So to make it easier, I'm just gonna drop that template which has my just basic HTML and CSS files that I just barely demonstrated for the actual template we'll be converting here inside of this template folder. Okay, so once you have that in place, you can go ahead and open up your follow Andrew theme or your folder inside of your code editor. So I'm gonna switch over to VS Code. That's the code editor that I'm going to be using here to set up my, uh, to do all the development here in PHP. So the first thing we need to do is create all of the folders and files that are required for a WordPress template. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add those here in my follow Andrew theme folder. 
So the first one we're going to be adding is called the assets folder. And the assets folder is going to have several subfolders as well. So I'll come inside of my assets and I will add the first one, which is going to be CSS. And then I will add the next one, which is going to be our fonts. And then I will add the next one, which is going to be the images and one more, which is going to be the JavaScript. Okay. So assets has all of those inside of them. Of course, we're going to be placing our CSS files and things like that in there in a minute. Uh, the next folder we're going to create here in our main directory is going to be our classes. So we'll just create that. Now this folder is going to be used to create any PHP classes that we'll be using for various functions to override WordPress functionality. Uh, we're going to create another one here called INC. So whoops, we're, I created that one in the wrong spot. This uh, needs to be outside there. So INC stands for includes. And that's going to be any sort of include files that we want to also include. And we'll go ahead and create one more here. And this one is going to be called template-parts. So this is a common folder you'll see in many WordPress themes. It just allows us to split little individual parts of our template up even further. And again, this is all sort of uh, common, but you can really split up your template and theme however you want. There's no really set rules here. And then we're going to create one more. Whoops, I did the same thing here. I need to create this as a not as a subfolder here. And another one called templates. So these are the required folders that we have. Assets with all these subfolders and then classes, ink, template parts, templates, and, and then this is our master template. So again, these aren't, I shouldn't say required, but this is how we're going to build our theme. Now, the next thing we're going to do is set up several files. So these files, there's actually only two files that are required for a WordPress theme the CSS file and the index.php file. Those are the only two that are required. Everything above and beyond that is sort of how you want to customize and do your WordPress theme. So we'll go ahead and start off here and we're just going to create all the blank files. We're not going to be adding any content whatsoever at this point. So the first one here is going to be um, our 404.php. This is the file that will be served when we get a 404 server error. The next one is going to be a file called archive.php. This file will be responsible for delivering an archive. So a good example of this is like a blog post, the index of all the blog posts in a hierarchical format. That would be an archive page. The next one here is going to be the comments.php. So this template file will be responsible for displaying and serving up comments in our uh, theme. The next one here is going to be one called footer.php. And this is going to be responsible for the footer section, right? The very bottom of your website. The next one here is going to be our functions.php. And this file has special meaning in WordPress because in your functions.php file is where you can override and initiate different features of your theme inside of WordPress. So your functions.php file is going to be raw PHP code typically to override and change the way WordPress works fundamentally. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and add one called header.php. So this is going to be the, the file responsible for the top head section. That would be anything in the head, really whatever we determine we want to put in there, the header. Uh, the next file is going to be our index.php. So here is the first required file. So you have to have one called index.php. It serves as the fallback. So if WordPress can't locate a specific template file in the template hierarchy that it needs, it will always fall back to index.php. That's why it's required. Uh, the next one here is going to be called page.php. This template file will be responsible for displaying static pages. So things that aren't blog posts or aren't blog archives, like an about page would be a static page. So that's the template file that will do that. The next one here is going to be called, we'll just add a readme text. And this is just going to be a text file where we can put like copyright notices and things like that. If someone else were to download our template, we can put some information in there in a readme file. And then the next one here is going to be called search.php. So this is the template file that will display search results. So when somebody comes over to your WordPress site, right, and they hit this search button up here, what's going to show up there? Uh, the next file here is going to be our single.php. And this file will be responsible for, responsible for displaying single blog posts. So when you click on an individual blog post, that's how that template file or, or will display. 
And then the last file that we need is going to be our style.css. So again, this is the second required file. You have to have a file called style.css. This is the master style sheet for your website. So over here on the right hand side, you can see that I've got a WordPress site running locally. This is just the default 2020 WordPress theme that I have installed. So I'm just gonna kind of show you here. So when I come over here and do a search, so I'll just search for hello and do a search. You can see that I've got some results that came back, right? The results that are being returned are going to be using this search.php template. So how this page looks will be determined by the, the code in that template. Uh, if we come over here to a blog archive, so if I click on like posts from March 2020, it's going to give me all of the posts from March 2020. That would be using the archive.php template. If I click into an individual post, like here's my hello world post, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that post. You can see I'm now looking at this individual blog post. This one's going to be using the single.php template file. Of course, my comments down here at the bottom are going to be using my comments.php template file, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? You kind of get the idea there. So these are all the required files that we'll be using in this example, but again, there's really only two that are required from WordPress. So uh, the last little thing that I'm going to add here to our theme folder is a screenshot. So a screenshot is typically just a little screenshot of what the theme looks like. If you were to put this on the WordPress store, it would show up, you know, when you're searching for themes as a little thumbnail of what that theme would look like. So I'll go ahead and add that next. OK, so I've gone ahead and just taken a quick screenshot here. So if I click on screenshot, you can see this is the screenshot that I've added into the site. And uh, that's how it looks. So let's go ahead and now look at one more thing here. And this is called the template hierarchy. Now, we've just sort of determined to build our hierarchy in a sort of similar uh, common fashion, I would say, for WordPress themes. But I want to show you kind of a detailed look at what's known as the template hierarchy. So you can see here over, over here on the right hand side, it's a little easier to read this from right to left, I think. But the index.php file in WordPress is the fallback template file. Then there's one you can create called singular. So if your single blog posts and your pages look the exact same, you can just create one called singular that essentially will act for both. And there's one in here called archive, you can see. And archive will catch is the catch all for all archive pages. But if you want to get more specific, you can create one called category. So each one of your blog post categories can have a different look and feel. Or maybe you can sort them by date. And you can see you just move from right to left through the screen and you can see there's a million different uh, ways you can sort of create and customize your WordPress themes based on all of these different types of files. So the last file that we haven't added yet that we will add is this one right here called front page. So oftentimes the main landing page of a website looks different from all the other pages of a website. So if you want to do that, you can do it two ways. You can create one called home.php, which will work for both the blog posts and the index pages and also the static front page you can see. If you want to get more specific, you can create one called front-page.php to use instead. So that's the last file we'll create here. But again, that you can kind of reference this dialog to see all the various types of template files you can create for your WordPress theme. So I'll jump back here to my code and we will create one final file in here called front-page.php and add that one in there. OK, so now let's make it so that we can actually use this WordPress theme. So we're going to come over here to our style.css file and add just a couple of elements in here to the head section. So WordPress files have a style CSS and at the very, very top, uh, they have a comment section. So it's just like you would do a normal CSS comment like this, and then you're going to add various things inside of here and WordPress will use that to display when you go to install it. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. But the first one we're going to add is one called theme name. And I'm just going to call this uh, my follow Andrew theme. But again, this is whatever you want to call your theme. And the next thing here is going to be our text domain. And I'm just going to call this follow Andrew as well. And the next thing in here is going to be your version. So I'm just going to call this version 1.0, 1.0. And then you can add a description of your theme. So I'll just say a fancy uh, WordPress. We'll call this a fancy left sidebar theme. 
And then you can also add some tags. So I can call this uh, left dash sidebar responsive fancy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create the author. That's Andrew Wilson. And then you can do what's known as an author, a U author URI. So this would be the URL, right? If you have your own website or something, I'll just do HTTP colon slash slash youtube.com slash follow Andrew. Uh, again, you can place any sort of URL there. I suppose we need HTTPS. And there's a few other ones in here as well. For example, you can add the license type. You can add some other additional things. Again, on the WordPress codex, you can see all the available things you can add inside of this comment. But it's always the very first thing in your CSS sheet. It needs to start on line one. So we add that in there, and that's pretty much all we need. So I'm going to go ahead and save that file. And now that I have that uh, file with all these required sort of metadata, if you will, in your style sheet, I'm going to log in here to my WordPress site in the back end. So I'll come down in here and I'll say login. And I've just got this set up with a little username and password for uh, my Andrew Andrew. And this is the WordPress backend. So now when I come over here to my appearance and over to my themes, you'll notice that there is a new theme here. I'm gonna pull this over just a little bit. So you can see there's my new theme. So I've got the default theme installed, which is the 2020 theme that comes with WordPress. And now I've got my follow Andrew theme. So if I click on theme details, you can see all these details over here in the right hand sidebar. That should, that should make sense now, right? So there's my theme name, there's the version, there's the author. If I click on this, it'll take me to the link. There is my description. Here are all of my tags that I added. So all that information is pulled directly from your style sheet, okay? And then of course, here is the screenshot.png file. So that's coming from right here, my screenshot.png file. And they might have a specific size. I didn't even double check that on requirements here. I just sort of snapped one and uploaded it. But double check the codex. They might have a requirement on the size for this particular image. But it works as long as you have one called screenshot.png in your theme folder. And that's pretty much it. So once you have those required files, you should see your theme here appear. Now I'm gonna go ahead and activate this theme. So all you have to do is click activate and this will essentially make my new theme become the active theme. So now I'm gonna switch back to the main front end and you will see that there's really nothing here. It's completely blank. I don't see any posts and that's because all of my template files are completely blank, right? There's nothing to them. Okay, and that's it for step one. So we have our template file created for our theme. We have all these blank files and folders created and you can see we have an empty theme. So in the next part in this series, we'll start to add all of the basic HTML and CSS so we can at least get something to appear here. And then we'll just continue on to start to build out this entire WordPress theme. So click on the like, subscribe, thumbs up on the videos, and we will see you in the next one.